Good morning, and welcome to St. Mary's. This morning's Mass celebrates the most holy body and blood of Christ, and our celebrant this morning will be Father Matt. We ask that you please turn off all cell phones and any electronic devices during the Mass, and please stand and join us in our opening hymn, Table of Plenty. Come to the feast of heaven and earth, come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. Oh, come and sit at my table where saints and sinners are friends. I wait to welcome the lost and lonely to share the cup of my love. Come to the feast of heaven and earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. <clears throat> you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, we will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and 12 pillars for the 12 tribes of Israel. Then having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocausts and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it aloud to the people who answered, all that the Lord has said, we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people saying, this is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all of these words of his. The word of the Lord. Take the cup of salvation and 
from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from dead works to worship the living God. For this reason, he is mediator of a new covenant since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the city and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, gave it to them, and said, take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, 
and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> well, this is the great feast of Corpus Christi, the feast of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. It celebrates perhaps the central and arguably the most important doctrine of the Christian church, the Eucharist, the Eucharist itself. I am a priest because of the Eucharist. I was in the seminary with my friend I speak of often, Father Dan Kennedy, now gone to God. And we were having a couple of beers, watching the game or whatever, and we just started talking and having a good, serious conversation. And I said, why are you here? And he said, I have a deep love for God's people. You? And I said, no, not really. <laughs> I'm here because I'm in love with the Eucharist. I'm in love with the Eucharist. You see, the Eucharist is no symbol. It has symbolic aspects, yeah, sure. But the Eucharist is Jesus Christ sacramentally, which means mysteriously, but truly, really, and substantially present to us in the appearance, and it's the mere appearance, of bread and wine. The church uses the word species, the species of bread and wine, which is Latin for appearance. Body, blood, soul, and divinity of the Lord Jesus Christ really, truly, and substantially present to us in this Eucharist. Now, all of the sacraments are physical signs instituted by Christ for the conferral of grace. Baptism, the physicality is the washing. Uh, confirmation, the physicality is uh, the, the oil. Uh, matrimony, the physicality is the very bodies of the couple and their words. The physicality of the, of the Eucharist is the bread and wine, but no longer bread and wine. Through the prayer of the priest and the action of the Holy Spirit, that bread and wine is transformed. The real word is transubstantiated. You hear the word substance in there, right? The substance, its, its whatness, its identity is changed. Philosophers use these words to describe what happens. You have something's substance and its accidents. There's a million different chairs in the world, but they're all chair, right? The substance of that thing is chair. Its accidents are, this one happens to be wood, it's carved, it's got a green cushion, etc., etc. What happens at the Mass is the Holy Spirit squeezes out, if you will, its breadness, and it becomes Jesus Christ. There's still aspects of breadness there. Tastes like bread, looks like bread, looks like wine, tastes like wine. But what it really is, in its now bones, if you will, is the presence of Jesus Christ really, truly, and substantially present. That's why the church doesn't force us to pretend that's human flesh or human blood. No. This is a sacrament. It's a physical sign for the conferral of grace. That's why there is bread and wine. As we heard in the first reading, a sacrifice demands blood, the separation of blood from flesh. That's why Mass isn't complete until the priest receives both species. Every priest at every Mass has to receive both species for the act to be complete. Why? Because the priest is acting in the person of Jesus Christ, and he's accepting back the sacrifice. It's now whole. You see some priests out of a misguided sense of, I don't know, hospitality or whatever, they, they receive last. No, that's, that's, not, that's not how you're supposed to do it. The priest needs to get over himself and do what the church is asking you to do. Because there's, there's theology behind all of this. And it's gorgeous. It's beautiful theology. Once the reality of the Eucharist penetrates your mind, penetrates your heart, your life is different. My certainly was. Found myself in the seminary. So we come today to celebrate this extraordinary reality. The unbloody representation of Christ's one eternal sacrifice on the cross. The great... Uh, spiritual, were you there when they crucified our Lord? We hear it on Good Friday. Catholics answer yes. 
at every mass, at every mass. We are there. We are at the foot of the cross. I'm always fascinated by the fact that this garment is probably the most iconic garment associated with the priesthood, but we only wear it at mass. Don't wear it at baptisms, don't wear it at weddings, don't wear it at confirmations when there is no mass. The, the iconic garment of the priest is the stole. This is the sign of office. To signify the priest has taken the yoke of Christ on his shoulders. The chasuble, what is this? Why do I wear this? This is what they wore in the ancient world in the temple to keep the blood off of their street clothes. Kids usually like hearing that, right? Ah, that's gross. Ah. But that's why this is the traditional garment. Because there is a sacrifice here. We are separating flesh and blood. The great writer, Flannery O'Connor, was at a party. And she's very reticent and kind of shy. And she was with all these socialite types. And someone, meaning well, tried to include her into the conversation, knew she was Catholic. And she said, I admire the Eucharist very much. It's such a beautiful symbol. And Flannery O'Connor said, well, if it's a symbol, to hell with it. Bingo. She's absolutely right. It's no mere symbol. A symbol's not worth celibacy. I think I'd be a good husband. I got a pretty good education. I think I could make a lot more money than I am now. But it is the Lord. And so it's worth every sacrifice. Up and down the ages, men and women have been martyred for the opportunity just to do what we're doing today. Never forget that. Men and women have been martyred just for the opportunity to come to Mass. And it happens in civilized countries. So how is all of this true? Well, it comes down to authority. If I was standing out in the middle of traffic, waving my arms and blowing a whistle, you would drive right by me and say, who's that kook and what's he think he's doing? But if I'm a police officer, you'd slow down and wait for instructions. Where does he want me to go? What am I supposed to do? If I'm at the Bruins game and I'm screaming, that's a goal, that's a goal, that's a goal, no one cares. If I'm the referee, if I say that's a goal, it's a goal. Jesus Christ is God Almighty. What he says is. Lazarus, I say to you, get up and rise. Lazarus gets up. Little girl, I say to you, arise. And she does. Jairus' daughter. This is my body. This is my blood. What he says is. And in that is our hope. Friends, let us stand and proudly profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. The life of the world to come. Amen.
confident that God hears the prayers of his people, we turn to him now with all of our needs and intentions. For God to continue to protect our holy church and bless her efforts in spreading the good news, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who lead to be guided by the Holy Spirit in seeking the common good in their communities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our military and first responders who face so many difficult situations yet always respond to the call, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they rejoice in the eternal blessing of heaven, especially Rosemary Buckley, members of our Mass Intention Guild, and all our beloved deceased, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Jim Cole and family, for whom our sanctuary, sanctuary candle is lit this week, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those needs best spoken in the silence of our hearts. For those needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Paul McAuliffe, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we turn to you with these our prayers. We unite them to the prayers of the blessed and ever-glorious Virgin Mary, and speak them in the name of her Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our offertory hymn is One Love Released. One bread, one body, one cup, one call, one faith, one spirit, present in us all. One prayer, one blessing, one hope, one peace, one church, one Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy, so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Let's 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all of the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Our communion hymn is One Bread, One Body.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Just a few brief announcements. The Eucharistic Adoration, sponsored by the Catholic Daughters, will be on Wednesday, the 9th, after the 9 a.m. Mass, until about 7 p.m. The deadline to order bricks from the Knights of Columbus for the Memorial Garden is June 18th. Forms are on the website or at the back of the church. And please call the rectory to register any upcoming first graders for religious education for the fall. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Our recessional hymn is Canticle of the Sun. are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come lay in the field, and sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. Praise for the sun, the bringer of day, he carries the light of the Lord in his rays. The moon and the stars who light up the way unto your throne. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come lay in the field, and sing, sing to the glory of 